सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग मैम गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर प्रोसेसिंग 
ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಹೊರದಿ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಡಿಯರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ಲಿ ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಆಡಿಯೋ ಆಂಡ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ஒரு
No. Yes, sir. Sir, sir, excuse me, sir. there are a number of participants on the line, sir, so uh, waiting for five minutes. Sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank <laughs> you. 
excelente. Deploy hiring. Participants, please stop presenting. Okay, Mama, Mama. Then, maybe we can do it. Maybe we Participants, please mute your audio and video. Please stop presenting. Participants, please stop presenting. Chandrakala, please stop presenting. Chandrakala, ma'am, please stop presenting, ma'am. Please cooperate us with, ma'am. Hachodi, ma'am. Hachodi, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, please yes. start the session, ma'am. Ma'am, please start the program, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Now I show. A very good morning to everyone, and thank you for joining us to the second day FDP on recent researches in graph theory. The mathematician Saguntala Devi says, without mathematics, there is nothing you can do. Everything around you is mathematics. Everything around you is numbers. Yes, of course, 
not only the numbers graph theory is also related to the real life today we are going to learn more about graph theory it is our privilege and honor to welcome our resource person dr h s ramani professor of mathematics karnataka university i really happy to welcome our principal dr sister kathleena i heartily welcome our secretary dr sister maria mall once again i welcome you all the participants now our colleague a helen shobana introduce the resource person a pleasant good morning to all let me thank the almighty for giving me a wonderful opportunity to introduce our chief guest dr ramane professor department of mathematics karnataka university darwad india in this intellectual occasion he obtained his bsc degree from govindam zikshariya science college belga msc and phd degrees from karnataka university darwad he started his career as lecturer at god institute of technology belga in the year 1994 and promoted there as assistant professor associate professor and professor from october 2013 He is a professor in the Department of Mathematics, Karnataka University. He is a coordinator for UGC Sub Bureau Three Program in the department. He has 24 years of teaching and research experience. His research workers mainly in graph theory, in particular spectral theory, energy of graphs, distances in graphs, and the topological indices. he has collaborative research work with the people from india and abroad he has published 124 research papers in national and international journals written three book chapters participated in more than 80 conferences and delivered 47 invited talks in the conferences he has visited indonesia china and taiwan for presentation of research paper and to give invited talk in international conferences he has completed one research project he has guided 11 phd students and currently seven students are doing their phd he is a reviewer for american mathematical society's mathematics review also he is a referee for many scientific journals he is on the editorial board of journal of algebraic systems iran he is a member of BOS, BOE, and BOA at various universities. He is a life member of academic and professional bodies like Indian Mathematical Society, Indian Science Congress, Academy of Discrete Mathematics and Applications, Indian Society for Technical Education, Kerala Mathematical Association. The fragrance of flowers spread only in the direction of wind, but the goodness of your person spreads in all direction yes i am glad to invite such an inspiring personality our chief guest dr ramane to take over the session welcome you sir thank you ma'am okay. thank you ma'am now the session hand over to the resource person Okay, I'll start. Uh, first of all, I'm thankful to the Bond Secos College for Women to inviting me for this uh, FDB program and giving me opportunity to share my thoughts. Especially, I'm thankful to the Helen Madam for nice introduction about me, and I'm thankful to all uh, colleague, uh, the HOD of department, principal, management, and all those. Okay, so we'll uh, start with the session. can all can see the this slide sir sir visible sir visible okay okay 
So topic is given to me recent researches in graph theory. The graph theory is a part of discrete mathematics. There are so many sub branches in this because of its diversity to other field like uh, science subject, chemistry, physics, social network, transportation problems, psychological problems, and so on. This so there are many real world problems related with the graphs. Uh, it is difficult to cover each and every point in this short period of time. I just concentrate main focus only on the uh, topological indices and based on the degrees of the vertices and the distances and a little bit about the spectral graph theory. So as you know, a graph is a mathematical structure used to model pairwise relation between the objects. So here, objects will be taken as a vertices, and if there is a relation, then we can put the line between those objects. So a graph in this context is made up of vertices or nodes, which are connected by edges or lines. The graph theory begins with the, the famous problem on college Bajba given the solution given by the Leonard Euler. The paper written by Leonard Euler on the seventh bridge of Konisbach and it is published in the year 1736 and it is considered as the first paper in the graph theory. So many of you know about this, even though let me the explain about here, those who are unaware about this. So there were two islands linked to each other and to the banks of Rijal River by seven bridges. So this is a original figure. And here are the river and these islands are connected with the seven bridges here. Okay, you can see here. So the, it's uh, I what uh, we is like this. Okay. And Sir, hello, sir. Sir, not audible, sir. Sir. Hello, sir. No, it is okay. hello, not audible, audible, sir. Now. Now, okay, sir. Audible. Okay, audible. No. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 So now again, I'll start. Okay, the the graph theory roots in the problem of Euler's the solution given by Euler for the Konigsberg bridge problem, which is published in 1736. Okay, so there were two islands linked to each other and to the banks of the Prijal River. So here you can see in this figure, okay, the river is there and uh, the islands are connected with the seven bridges. Okay, so in this figure you can see here. So these two islands and these are the two banks of the river okay and they are connected with the seven bridges so this is represented in the graph as the lands are taken as a points or vertex okay and if there is a bridge between two lands then we can put a line okay so there are seven bridges so you get the seven lines like this so problem was to start at any of the four land okay and walk over each of the seven bridges exactly once and return to the starting point okay many of May be aware about this, even though let me tell. Okay. So problem was to start at any of the four lands and walk over each of the seven bridges exactly once in, in, in not to cross once again. Okay, only once and return back to the starting point. So I have shown that it is not possible. Okay. How he has shown? He has shown that the any network is traversable if and only if the each vertex has a even degree. Even degree means the number of lines joining to that point. For example, if you take this point, so here there are three lines, uh, sorry, uh, five lines. So degree of this vertex is five, degree of this is three, okay. Degree of this is also three and this is also three. So if each vertex has degree even number, then only it is possible, otherwise not possible. So in this case, it is degree of each vertex is not the even. So it is not possible to travel 
pro, uh, starting from any point and then crossing each line exactly once and coming back to the starting point so from here the graph theory started okay so perhaps he has generalized the problem and developed the criteria for the given graph to be diverse that only i told if degree of each point is even then only it is possible otherwise not next okay just first i will go begin with how the graph theory is developed and how the interest will be created and then we'll go with the main topic so Kitchup developed the theory of trees in 1847 in order to solve the system of simultaneous linear equations, which gives the current in each branch and around each circuit of electric network. For example, consider this electrical network connected with the resistance, capacitance, then battery and all that. Okay. So this network is represented in the form of graph. Okay, so if there is a connection, uh, nodes are there, that will be taken as a points, and if there is a any resistance or capacitors, inductance or a battery in between the two nodes, then we'll put the line. Okay, so this is a graph corresponding to this electrical network. Okay, then he has shown that it is not required to study each and every cycle here. Just you study the spanning trees. Okay, tree means a graph without cycles. For example, here there is a two cycles, but here it is no cycle. Okay, there is no cycle because it is cut here. This is good. And spanning means which covers all the points. So here, the this graph is a spanning tree of this. So only you need to learn the or study the spanning tree. You not to cover all the edges or all this. So from this, the graph theory is useful for the electrical network. So one can get uh, how many uh, such spanning trees are there using the other uh, graph parameters as well as some other. Uh, mathematical parameters using the graph theory. Then in 1857, Kelly discovered the important class of graphs called trees. Okay, just I told the tree is nothing but a connected graph having no cycle. There is no cycle, then it is called tree. For example, in the previous slide, this is a tree. Okay, this is a tree. So such type of structures are called trees. So here uh, Kelly discovered that to study the enumeration of isomers of the hydrocarbons C n H2 n plus 2 with given number of n atoms. For example, if you put n is 1, it is a methane, and if you put n is 2, it is a ethane. So, like that, there are class of hydrocarbons with uh, this uh, chemical bond C n H2 n plus 2. So, what he has done, he related this problem of finding the number of trees with p points, okay, in which every point has degree 1 or 4. So, I told the degree of a point is nothing but the number of lines adjacent to or incident to that point. So the in chemistry, the structures are mostly with the degree one or four means, for example, hydrocarbons. Okay, so here see, if you um, take the degree of this point is one, whereas degree of this is four. In this case also, here these are the degrees one and whereas the degree of the carbon atoms is four. So such such. So how many such trees are there with uh, P points having the degree either one or four? So that is the enumeration means counting the how many trees with uh, given points, with the given condition, that degree of one and four. So for that, he developed the class of graphs, which we call the trees. Then this Hamiltonian problem, most of you know. Okay, so the William Hamilton in 1859, he invented the uh, game using the regular power dodecahedron for 20 points. Okay, there are these are dodecahedron with uh, 20 vertices are there, and which can be labeled with the names of the some cities. Okay, then here the play, player is challenged to travel by finding a closed circuit along the edges, which passes through each vertex exactly once. Okay, so you need not to cross the any point or any city again. Only once you have to go there and you, you have to go to the next city. So like that, you have to cover all the cities and come back to the starting point. Okay, so this uh, dodecahedron is represented in the form of graph here. Okay, this is a graph. So what I said taken as this. Uh, Corners are taken as the points, and if there is lines, we will put in the edges like this. So it is possible. You can start from any point. For this dot to cut, it is possible. If we start from here, okay, I have drawn here with the red color circuit. Okay, so with this, if you start, you can go like this, come here, come here, like this, you can go, go here, 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 here. We are covering each city or each point exactly once. Okay, and we have covered all the cities or all the points. And come back. Okay, so such graphs means graphs 
containing the cycle okay which covers all the points is called the hamiltonian graph so from this the hamilton class of graphs has developed okay then a lot of properties uh, based on this concept are developed so which graphs are hamilton and which are not because every graph need not be hamilton okay okay need not be hamilton then uh, again here also it comes a complexity problem because with given number of points how many or given graph how many you can find the distinct hamiltonian circuits for example the total number of different hamiltonian circuits in a complete graph uh, with n points complete graph means a graph where every point is adjacent okay every graph is uh, every point, pair of point is adjacent with the line okay so if uh, complete graph with n points then it has a n c2 lines because every pair is adjacent so total uh, number of different hamiltonian cycles or circuits in a complete graph with n points is this n minus 1 factorial divided by 2 okay so theoretically the problem of traveling salesman problem okay to reduce the distance when the uh, salesman travel from one point to other point to come back to the his starting point or to his office okay so to get the hamiltonian cycle and that to be minimized so if you put the some weight weight means for example the distance between two cities okay in terms of kilometers can be taken as a weight okay here it is we are taking only the distance is 1 1 1 1 unit but uh, in general uh, in transport problem you may put here some this some numbers some numbers means uh, distance between the two points in terms of kilometers and so that time it will becomes a weighted graph okay so says one can always be Uh, the that problem can be always solved by enumerating all those hamiltonian circuits so n minus 1 by 2 divided by 2 hamiltonian circuits you have to find uh, means you have to get then calculate the distance travel in each of the that cycle and then pick the shortest one but it is time consuming because even if you take n with the 10 there are so many n means 9 factorial divided by 2 the many many uh, hamiltonian cycles will be there okay even with n is 10 if n is more 100 and like that then it is uh, enormous work to calculate all those because you have to pick all those uh, cycles and then get the uh, total uh, distance traveled by the person and then from that you have to pick so so far so that's why so far no epson algorithm is found to find the shortest hamilton cycle with given arbitrary size of graph okay so this is a challenging one people are working on this okay. then cutting up a map many of you know okay so if you take this uh, map okay mm. and the coloring of this map is nothing but assigning the colors to each region okay in such a way that no two adjacent regions have the same color adjacent means if they two regions say the common boundary not the point okay not the corner okay so if they are setting the corner then they will then will then you will not call they are adjacent if they are setting common boundary then only you can say they are the adjacent okay so you have to color the map in such a way that two the two adjacent regions should have different colors see for example here it is green here it is red you can't put here green that here also green because they are adjacent here okay here it is blue here you can put green because uh, or here you can put green okay because this and this they are not adjacent regions okay here here uh, this region you can put green this also you can put green but this and this you can't put because they are adjacent so like that you have to color the map so that is called the coloring of a map or assigning the colors to the map okay so in graph the theoretical what will do each region is taken as a point okay each region is taken as a point okay and if the two regions have the common boundary then we can put the line between those two points okay so four color conjecture states that any map in the plane okay on the plane if you uh, drawn then the that map can be colored with four or fewer than four colors so maximum four colors are sufficient to color the any plane map okay for example if you take this map okay this map so here we have put red Hello sir. Hello sir. Sir. Hello. Hello sir. Madam, somebody mute him, ma'am. Yaro or mute pane idanga. Yes, yes. Hello sir. Someone muted your audio, sir. 
सर हेलो सर मेकिंग आई एम ट्राइंग हेलो हेलो सर सर नाउ ऑडियोबल सर या या समवन हैज रिकॉर्डेड दैट या या यस सर यस सर so i will go back to the screen now okay now it is audible no audible sir hello it is sir, audible no audible okay 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 so covering up a map so any plane map if you consider okay four colors are sufficient or less than four if you take this map see here only four colors are green is there blue is there uh, red is there and yellow is there Okay, no two adjacent regions have the same color. See here, you can see this and this they are adjacent, different color. This and these are adjacent, different color. So like that, any plane graph can be colored with four or lesser than four. Participants, don't mute resource person's audio, please, sir. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Now audible. Okay. 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 So then next, the psychologist Levin proposed that the lifespan of an individual be represented by a planar map. So in such map, the regions would be the represent the various activities of a person. So in the uh, it comes in the social network, the people are represented by points and interpersonal relation by lines. Okay. So if there is a good relation, we can put line. If there is a bad relation, we will not put the line. So like that the. that uh, social network can be modeled in the form of uh, graph or even if it is uh, uh, you can assign the uh, some signs also if there is a good relation put a positive sign or put plus 1 if there is a no, not a good relation then put a negative sign or uh, minus 1 like that some you may get sign graph or weighted graph and which can be studied to resolve the psychological problems then in the study of markov chain in probability theory in was directed graphs in the sense that events are represented by points and the direct light line from one point to another indicates a positive probability of direct succession of these two lucky events okay so in the markov chain or in the probability also the graphs can be used but there we use the directed graph okay. So already I told there are so many topics in the graph theory like domination theory is there, coloring of graph is there, decomposition of graphs is there, network analysis, planarity to check the whether graph is planar or not, topological indices, which is again the nowadays it is boom, booming, booming. This means many parameters are involved in this. Then spectral graph there is there, graph labeling, which is a kind of a coloring problem only. Then sign graph I told uh, you can assign some signs means positive, negative, or like that. Directed graphs where the edges are having the directions, okay, and then graph products are there like Cartesian is there, tensor product, and so on. So so many topics one can go through this and one can uh, do the work, okay. Uh, other than that, there are some other graphs, but these are the main topics in the graph theory. Uh, here I am going to deal with only uh, not all, but uh, topology indices and some. Uh, problems on the spectral graph theory so as a told a graph g consists of finite non empty set uh, denoted by v of g of n points together with the some prescribed set e of g of m order pairs of distinct elements of v of g so here v of g is called the vertex set and the e of g is called the edge sets so consider this figure okay so here the these points V one, V two, V three, V four, V five, and V six. They are called the points or vertices or nodes of this graph, and the collection is the vertex set. And the 
there is a line between v1 to v2 so we call it the edge okay so the v1 to v2 is there v2 v3 is there so v1 v2 is same as v2 v1 okay it is an order pair and then v3 so there are total eight lines or eight edges are there so this is the edge set and this is the vertex set and the degree of a point is nothing but the number of lines incident to that point so for example the degree of a point v1 is 3 and degree of point v2 is Oh. Sir, PPT is not visible, sir. It's not visible? Not visible, sir. No, see? Not visible, sir, PPT. Excuse me, sir. Pin no. SAS screen, then uh, you can uh, see the... Sir. Don't listen to the research person, sir. Okay, okay. So this is a vertex set and this is a edge set of this graph. Okay. And then uh, the graph is said to be connected if they every pair of points has a path. Otherwise, it is disconnected. Okay. So the topological indices. What I am talking about this. So a graph invariant is a function on a graph. Which is not depending on the labeling of its vertices. So, how you give the label, the final value will be same. Okay, you change the labeling, the final answer of that parameter should be same. Then that is the invariant. So, such quantity is called the topological index or molecular descriptor. Okay, because it is not changing, so we call it topological. So, topology play a significant role in theoretical chemistry, especially to study the quantity structure property relationship and quantity structure activity relationship so to predict their boiling point melting point or polarization or any other chemical property uh, the people are using this uh, indices so here again in chemical science graph indices have been found to be useful in isomer discrimination and the uh, pharmaceutical drug design so first uh, Topology are based on the degrees. Okay, of course, uh, the first is the uh, uh, Wiener index based on the distances. But in the degrees, this is first one that is called Zagreb indices. So people from Zagreb, this is the name of the city, Zagreb. So Goodman and Trinastic introduced the first and second Zagreb index. They call it the Zagreb index based on the vertex degrees. So and these are defined as first the uh, Zagreb index is defined as sum of the du square. Du means du means nothing but the degree of a point. Okay, and the second Zagreb index is defined as the product of du and dv, where u and v are adjacent. So if there is an edge between two vertices, then only you have to take that product, others not. So these are the two indices introduced in 1972. Okay, and now many invariants or generalization of such indices are introduced by many researchers throughout the world. Okay, so this first Zagreb index can be expressed in the form of du plus dv also where u and v are connected means u and v are joined by the edge so same easily one can identify this okay this can be expressed in the form of du plus dv okay because uh, uh, u is adjacent to v so there are many uh, means a uh, number of points will be there uh, adjacent to u so that times you will get here so it becomes the du square okay so when you solve this you get this one so one can write the m1g in the form of this or in the form of some of the degrees of the adjacent vertices. Then, as I told, there are uh, many modifications of the Zagreb indices. Okay, the first and second hyper Zagreb index proposed as like this du plus dv square, and it is du dv whole square. See, here it is uh, du plus dv. Okay, and second Zagreb index is du into dv. So, the other author they are here squared it, and here also squared it, and he called it the Hyper Zagreb index. Okay, so first and second hyper Zagreb index are defined like this du plus dv whole square, where uv belongs to e of g means uh, u is adjacent v. Okay, and here du dv whole square. Then general Zagreb indices are okay, m1 alpha. Alpha is any real number. Okay, denoted by m1 alpha g. It is du raised to alpha. Okay, originally it is raised to 2. Okay, raised to 2. So instead of 2, uh, the author has put here alpha. Alpha is any number. So here, 
du raised to alpha. So that can be written as du raised to alpha minus one plus dv raised to alpha minus one. Okay, it can be expressed in the form of this, where u and v are joined by the line. And the second general Zagreb index is summation of du dv raised to alpha. So if we put alpha is three, okay, so it becomes the forgotten index. Okay, that is uh, du cube. Why it is called forgotten index? Because uh, it was also introduced in the year 1972 by the same authors, Gutmann and Thinastic, but uh, till recent, uh, nobody has worked much on that. But recently, the Kurchulan group, they work on this index and they call it as a forgotten index because from 72 to uh, till uh, this, uh, now 2018, like that, no, no work was there. Okay, so they given the name forgotten index. Okay, and it is a uh, d square plus d square, and you put alpha is minus half in the general Zagreb index. Uh, the, in the second general Zagreb index, then it becomes the Randic index. Okay, that is summation of one by square root of du into dv. Okay, please note that here du means degree of a vertex u. Okay. Okay, so these modified general. Okay, so putting different values of alphas, you can get the particular case for the index, then you have forgotten index, and so on. Then the general sum connective index. Okay, so different uh, varieties of Zagreb indices people have started to introduce. So general sum connective index is summation of du plus dv raised to alpha, where u is in the itself. Okay, and then if you put uh, alpha is minus sub, then it is, becomes a sum connective index, which was already defined before this only. Okay, and that is a summation of one by square root of du plus d. So that's just like invariant. See here, in the Randic index, it is square root of du into dv, whereas in the sum connective, it is a sum. One divided by square root of du plus dv. The harmonic index is summation of two times du plus dv. Then it's general as ranging, uh, taking the power as alpha. Okay, so if you put alpha, alpha is any real number. If you put alpha is one, it becomes the harmonic index. So for different value of alpha, you'll get the different, different uh, values of the general harmonic So, okay. Then see here, some connective ind index is du plus dv raised to alpha. Okay, du plus dv raised to alpha, whereas the Harmon general harmonic index is two divided by square uh, two divided by du plus dv raised to alpha. Two divided by du plus dv raised to alpha. So easily one can put the relation between general sum connective index that is chi alpha g and uh, h alpha g as h alpha g equal to two to the power alpha chi. Okay, easily uh, one can observe and put the relation. Then. Uh, Atom bond connective index is introduced as summation of square root of du plus du minus 2 divided by du plus. So du plus du minus 2 is nothing but the degree of a h. Okay, suppose h e as u v. Okay, so whose endpoints are u and v. Then degree of that line or degree of that h is degree of u plus degree of v minus 2. That is uh, degree of the endpoints minus 2. Okay, so it is degree of the h divided by the product of the degrees of the endpoints that is called atom bond connective index. Then geometric arithmetic index is two times square root of du dv divided by du plus dv. Okay. Some author they have done uh, reverse of this. Okay, reverse of this means du plus dv divided by two times square root of du dv. They call it is the arithmetic geometric index. Okay. So plenty of uh, indices have introduced. Okay. Only thing is uh, uh, one can see how useful these indices are there. Okay, simply introducing and at least uh, leave about the uh, properties for the other branches, but at least uh, uh, this mathematical properties or mathematical relations should be good enough for such indices. Okay, then only the introducing new indices and studying the uh, such indices are worth. Otherwise, uh, just simply introducing it is just uh, increasing the volume of the results, nothing else. Then reformulated Zagreb indices are okay. So here uh, earlier uh, I shown in the slides they are based on the degrees of the points. Now this is a, based on the degree of a line. 
okay one i thought that oh, why not uh, the lines can be included okay so here rebounds are is rm1g as summation of d square where e is the h okay if you replace this e with the point then it becomes the first zagreb index so instead of point the line is put here okay line is put so in other words it is nothing but the zagreb index of the line graph of a g okay zagreb index of the line graph of g. because line graph is nothing but a graph whose points are the corresponding to the lines of the graph and two points in line graph are adjacent if and only the corresponding lines say a common point in the original graph okay so this is nothing but the this reform is nothing but the zagreb zagreb index of the line graph of g okay so same way here rm to g is summation of d into d dash where e and e dash as the edges and they are incident or they say a common point okay or you can call e and e dash are adjacent edges in g okay so and this uh, we know that the degree of a line is degree of u plus degree of v minus 2 so if you put here and simplify you will get that rm1g is related with the forgotten index second zagreb index first zagreb index with the other parameter like uh, number of lines okay so rmg is f of g plus 2 m2g minus 4 m1g plus 4 m then uh, Kodi put one of the Bernard indices in 2016 okay what he has done instead of taking the pair of points or pair of lines he has taken one as a point and one as a edge so first Bernard index is du plus d where u is a end point of a line e okay or in other words we can say u and e are incident to each other okay so one is a point one is a line okay and second same as the second uh, Bernard index is du into d okay where u is incident to the h e so since uh, if if you take e as because one end point of e is u so and another suppose v then degree of this this degree of e is can be written as du plus dv minus 2 so solving that one can get the relation between the Bernard index and the first zagreb index okay same way the relation between the second Bernard index and the hyper zagreb index and the first zagreb index. okay just replace this uh, d with uh, du plus dv minus 2 okay so easily one can get v one g as 3m 1g minus 4m so direct relation is there and b2g is hm1g minus 2m1g that's the first uh, hyper zagreb index okay and this is the first zagreb index of a graph okay all these indices based on the degrees of the points or lines then uh, here uh, in previous slides all we have seen when the uh, two points are adjacent then one can think what about if they are not adjacent okay so that is called the co indices okay denoted by m1 basis so first uh, zagreb co index m1 basis is du plus dv okay sum of the du plus dv where u and v are not adjacent okay that is u is not the edge of the okay similarly in the second uh, uh, zagreb co index as a summation of du dv where u is not belong excuse me sir yeah excuse me sir yeah, yeah. your uh, presentation is very well sir plus uh, yeah. ppt is very useful to understand sir so kindly give the ppt sir okay i can send afterwards participants don't disturb sir ma'am after that we will send the ppt ma'am Something is that one. Okay.
Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. You continue, sir. Sorry for the disturbance. Okay, so co indices, as I told, D U plus D V, where U and V are not adjacent. Similarly, the second Zagreb co index. So relation between Zagreb and co index easily one can put. Okay, so M one bar G can be related with M one G. So here M one bar G is two M into N minus one minus M one G. M two bar G is two M square minus half M one G minus M two G. M one bar G bar. Okay, G bar is a complement of G. Okay, so complement of a graph is nothing but a graph with the same vertex. Set. And two points in the G bar are adjacent if the if and only the corresponding points are not adjacent G. So M1 bar G bar is 2M N minus 1 minus M1 G. And uh, sorry, this is uh, it is not M1 bar; it is M2 bar. Okay, it is a mistake. M2 bar G bar is M into N minus 1 2 square minus uh, N minus 1 M1 G plus M2 G. Now observe here M1 bar of G and M1 bar of G bar are same. Okay, so they are same. M1 bar. Of G is same as M1 bar of G bar. So now come multiplicative Zagreb indices. Okay. So originally it is uh, taken as sum of the pairs of the degrees of the vertices. Okay. And then other the people thought why not to take as a product instead of summation. Okay. It is a product. So multiplicative Zagreb index instead of summation they have put here product. Okay, so d u square where u belongs to v of g, same way here also. The second uh, multiplicative Zagreb index as product of d u d v where u and v are adjacent. Okay, so same way for the other indices also, people have done. Okay, uh, you know, for example, uh, upper Zagreb index or generalized uh, Zagreb index or Randic index or uh, uh, general sum connective index and all that. Instead of summation, they put just uh, product. Okay, and uh, obtain some properties and some relations between the indices okay so there are many more degree based indices like that neighborhood indices there means based on uh, whatever i have done in the shown in the previous there based on the degrees of the purely based on the degrees of the point or degrees of the lines but uh, some other variants like that neighborhood indices means uh, some of the means based on the uh, degrees of the neighbors okay then kv indices based on the product degrees of the neighbors Gaurav indices, Dachshund indices, Aswin indices based on the uh, neighborhood uh, uh, degrees or uh, some other uh, parameter like that, the number of points uh, uh, nearer to that point than the other point, like that, based on that. Okay. Then Sanskrit index, Rayvan index, leap Zagreb index, that is a leap means uh, taking the second neighbor instead of taking the first neighbor, which is adjacent, instead of that, take second neighbor. Okay. And their degrees, then Kodibasa indices. Albert index. This is uh, based on the difference, difference between the uh, um, uh, degrees. Okay, in the Zagreb index, we are taking the du plus db. Okay, sum of the degree of u plus degree of v. Okay, instead of that, uh, here it is taken as a sum of the du minus db within the modulus sign. Okay, so sum of the du minus db where u and v are connected, or take co indices where u and v are not connected, and all that. So there are many such uh, indices are there. Okay, uh, and uh, so many work has been done based on the degree based indices. Now come to the topology based on the distances. Okay, so first uh, topology index is based on the distance, only, which is introduced by Go Wiener. Okay, in 1947. Okay, as a summation of D of UV. So here D of UV is the distance between the points U and V. So distance between two points is nothing but the length of the shortest path joining these two vertices. Okay. So here graph should be connected. Otherwise, what happens? If it is disconnected, then the distance will be taken as an infinity. Okay. So the basic condition is graph should be connected. Okay. So for every pair, okay, you take the distances and then add all those distances. That gives an index called minor index. Okay, so it was introduced by Herald in 1947 as a simple parameter that is well correlated to various physical chemical properties of molecule. The first application of this is nothing but the predicting the boiling point of alkene. So here the boiling point is 
x space in the form of alpha into Weiner of g plus beta into w of 3 plus gamma, where alpha, beta, gamma are the constants, empirical constants, and uh, this small w of 3 is nothing but the number of pairs of vertices whose distance is equal to 3. Okay, the pair of vertices having the distance 3. Okay, so that is a small w, and whereas this capital W is nothing but the Weiner index, that is, some of the distances between all pairs, the vertices. So, boiling point is correlated with the this uh, relation to, uh, for the Weiner index. So, see here, this consider this graph, simple graph one. Okay, so distance between v1 to v2 is 1, whereas distance between v1 to v3 is 2. Okay, so shortest length. Okay, there are so many paths v1, v2. V4, V3 is there, V1, V2, V3 is also, but shortest one, so shortest is two. So, like that, distance between all pairs is calculated, and then, then take the sum of all those, that is it. So, minor index of this graph is it. So, same way, uh, one can think to get the indices for the standard graphs. For example, the one index of complete graph is n into n minus 1 by 2. Because in the complete graph, the every pair is adjacent. Okay, and there are, uh, if with n points, there are nc2 pairs. Okay, and every pair is also total distance is n into n minus 1 by 2. Then one index of a complete bipedal graph. Okay, bipedal graph is a graph whose vertex set can be partitioned to two sets, say v1 and v2, such that uh, every line has one point in v1 and another point in v2. So, those graphs are called bipedal graphs. So complete means uh, having the partite set as v1, v2, and uh, every point of v1 is joined to every point of v2. Okay, and no two points in either v1 or v2 are adjacent. And the coordinate of v1 is p, and coordinate of v2 is q. So such graphs are complete bipedal graph. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, ma'am. Uh, okay, sir. Someone muted your audio, sir. That's okay. why, sir. Okay, okay. Then, why not of a star? Star is nothing but the complete bipedal graph with uh, one vertex containing only one point and the remaining points are in the other set. Okay, and it's so binary index is n minus one square. The binary index of a path P n. Okay, so path is a graph with uh, n points having exactly two points with degree one and remaining are with degree two. Okay, and it's uh, binary index is n into n square minus one by six. Whereas the binary index of a cycle, cycle is a graph whose every vertex has degree two. Okay, where n is more than equal to three. So Final index of a cycle is n cube by 8, if n is 1, and if n is odd, then it is n cube minus n by 8. Okay. And then for any graph G, the Weiner index lies between the Weiner index of complete graph and the Weiner index of PN. Okay. So here Weiner index of complete graph is n into n minus 1 by 2, whereas the Weiner index of PN is n into n square minus 1 by 6. So for any graph, any connected graph with n points, the Weiner index lies between these two values n into n minus 1 by 2 and n into n square minus 1 by 6. Okay. And for any tree, if you consider only tree, tree means a graph without cycle. Okay. It is a connected graph without cycle. So for any tree, the Weiner index lies between Weiner index of star and the Weiner index of pn. That is here. Uh, for any tree, the Weiner index lies between n minus 1 square and n into n minus 1 by, uh, n into n square minus 1 by 6. So between these two values, the binary index of any tree lies. Okay. Now, binary index of line graph. Okay, all you know what is meant by line graph. Okay. So, uh, there is a relation between the binary index of line graph of tree and the binary index of a tree. So, for any tree, the binary index of its line graph is expressed as a binary index of tree minus n c two. That is n into n minus one by two. Okay, so looking to this uh, relation, we can see that the one of L of t is not equal to one of t. Okay, mm -hmm. they are not the same. So question arises when it is equal. So for which iteration the this will be equal? Okay, so it is natural to ask minimum iteration. Okay, k 
of line graphs for which y naught of lkt is equal to y naught of t. Means take second line graph, third line graph, fourth line graph, and so on. What is the minimum so that the equality holds? So there is a one tree here. This tree on uh, nine points. Okay, and if you take its uh, second line graph, mistake line graph, and then again take its line graph. So one end is of that. Second line graph and the one-eighth of this original tree is same here, 96. So this is one of the tree. There are several trees out there having the same. If it is uh, you know, k is one, then it is not true because from this relation only one can see. Okay, one of your lot t for k equal to one is not same. Then go for second and for second it is the tree exists. Okay, so for this tree the one of t is same as the one of l square t and which is uh, calculated here. It is a uh, 96. So uh, I told that there are so many graphs, so uh, trees. So there exists infinite number of trees for which y naught of s square t is y naught t. So one of this. Okay, consider this lobster. Okay, consider this lobster. So here, uh, the number of edges of the lip means on this side is x k, and the number of lines here is y k. Okay. So lobster is a graph. If you remove the endpoints, it becomes a caterpillar. Now caterpillar is a graph. Okay, caterpillar is a graph. If you remove its endpoints, you will get a path. Okay, caterpillar is a tree. If you remove its endpoint, you will get a path. Lobster is a tree. Lobster is a tree. If you remove its endpoints, you will get a caterpillar. Okay, so this is one type of lobster. Okay, here XK lines are there and this side it is yk lines are there okay and these are the only three lines okay so where xk and yk are given in the this form okay xk is 3 into k square minus k plus 2 by 2 whereas this yk is the number 3 into k square plus k minus 2 by 2 and number of points total number of points is uh, 3 k square plus 11 okay then take its uh, second line graph okay take its second line graph so this looks like this okay take a one line graph and then again take line graph it looks like this, okay. And then find the binary index of this graph, okay, and binary index of this graph, and both are same, both are same. And it is nine k cube plus eighty one k raised to four plus two ninety k square plus three twenty four by two. Okay, so for different value of k, okay, you will get uh, uh, many such trees having the binary index of that tree and the binary index of its second line graph are same. Okay. So go for k equal to three. So there are trees for which y naught of l q t is more than y naught of t, and there are trees where the inequality is reverse. Y naught of l q t is less than y naught of t. But so far we are not uh, come across or uh, nobody has found a tree for which this is a equality. Okay, so y naught of l q t is equal to y naught of t. Okay. Um, either you have to prove this for some tree or either you prove that it is not possible okay so we don't know but uh, based on that the Dobrinon has conjectured that if t is a tree with uh, w of uh, lkt is more than w of t for k greater than equal to 4 so for fourth line graph fifth line graph and so on this is always greater okay this is always greater okay but for three there are greater some are smaller also for equality so far don't know okay so this is uh, regarding with three but one can think in general also for any graph okay or class of graphs you can say class of graphs uh, or find some conditions such that the winner of lkg is equal to winner of g for some k or for k equal to some values or whatever that okay with some condition whatever that one can think in the that direction to establish the relation between the winner of a graph and the uh, winner of its uh, uh, iterative line graph. So same can think for the other graph parameter also. Okay, not only winner, some other graph means uh, Zagreb index is there, atom bond connected index is there, hyper Zagreb index is there, harmonic index is there. In that direction, so one can think to see the uh, relation between the indices of a line graph and the index of the original graph.
then Harare index. It is just the reciprocal of the distances. Okay. Uh, sometimes it is called the reciprocal distance index also. Okay. In the uh, Weiner index, we take the sum of the distances between the all pairs. Here we take the sum of the distance uh, reciprocal of the sum of the distance. Uh, sorry, sum of the reciprocals of the distances. Okay. So Harare index is sum of one divided by d of u v for every pair or every subset containing two points of vertex. So here this is a graph. So distance between v1 v2 is one. So it is one. Distance between v1 v3 is two. Okay. So you can write here one by two. Distance between v1 v4 is two. So one by two. Then v2 v3 is one. So one by one is one. Similarly one one one. So total it is five. So this is a Harare index, or sometimes it is called the reciprocal distance index. So here also. Uh, uh since uh, here we are taking the reciprocals of the distances so naturally the harare index is always less than or equal to weiner index equal to holds only when the graph is a complete graph because in the complete graph every pair is adjacent so there so distance between any pair is one and if you take the reciprocal is also one okay so harare index and the weiner index of a complete graph is same okay but for other graphs it is not the case okay so here Harar index of complete graph is n into n minus 1 by 2. Same way the Harar index of complete bipartite graph with uh, cardinal two sets is p and q is p p minus 1 by 4 plus q q minus 1 by 4 plus p q. Harar index of star is n plus 2 into n minus 1 by 4. Harar index of a path on n points is 1 plus n to summation of 1 by k. k starts from 2 to n minus 1. There is 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 and so on up to 1 by n minus 1. And the Harar index of a cycle is expressed in the form of 1 plus n sum of 1 by k, k is 1 to n minus 2, epn is even, and for n is odd, it is n into sum of 1 by k. k starts from 1 to n minus 1. So what are the properties studied for the Weiner index? One can go for the Harar index. So, so people have, many people are working on this, okay, and they are established the good relations or good mathematical expressions with this index and the other properties of the graphs. So here we observe that any age addition will increase the Harar index. Okay, so as the age is added, the distance between the pair of points is decreases. Okay, because uh, uh, length will be smaller and smaller as you go on at the lines. Okay, hmm. so since the Harar index is a reciprocal, so Harar index increases. Okay, and if you delete the edges, then the distances increases. Okay. As the distance increases, since it is a reciprocal, the Harare index decreases. Okay, so with this observation, one can see if u and v are the non adjacent points of a connected graph G and E is the edge, then Harare index of G plus UV, that is non adjacent to add line, it is always more than Harare index of the original graph. And if we remove the line, okay, if we remove the line, it is less than the Harare index of G. So by this, it is easily follows that for any connected graph of order N, Harare index of G is always less than equal to Harare index of complete graph, which is n into n minus 1 by okay. Uh, in uh, Weiner index, it is reverse. Okay, Weiner index of G is more than Weiner index of the complete graph. Whereas in the Harare index, it is reverse. So if uh, small d is denoted with the diameter, diameter is nothing but the maximum distance between any pair in the graph. That is called the diameter of a graph. Okay, uh, we'll denote it by small d. So for any two orders u and v of a connected graph G, the distance between those two orders is always more than equal to one because it's a connected. Okay, and since uh, d is a maximum distance, that is diameter, so distance between any pair is always less than equal to d. So hence, for any connected graph G of order n. And having diameter d, the Harar index of that graph lies between these two quantities. That is n into n minus 1 by 2d and n into n minus 1 by 2. And equality holds if and only the corresponding graph is a complete graph. Otherwise, uh, uh, strict uh, inequality. Then this following the theorem gives the lower and upper bound for the Harar index, a bit tree. Okay. So if t is a tree on n points, then the 
1 plus n into summation of 1 by k, k starts from 2 to n minus 1, is less than equal to Harare index of 3, is less than equal to n plus 2, n minus 1 by 4. And this left inequality, equality holds if and only if t is a path, okay, and right holds if and only if it is a star. Now, status connective indices. This we have studied. Okay, so in the similar fashion, uh, uh, like uh, Weiner index as well as uh, Zagreb index. Okay, so status of a point, okay, is defined as sum of the distance between u and v, where v is any other point in the graph. That is, sum of the distance from that point to all other points. Sum of the distances between u to all other point is called uh, status of a point denoted by sigma of okay so Weiner index can be expressed in the form of status of a point okay so this is the original definition sum of the distance between uv okay for every pair of u and v so that can be expressed as half into sum of status of u okay where u belongs to v object so we are defined status connective indices of a connected graph g as denoted by s1 this is sum of the status of u plus status of v in the zagreb index it is a degree of u and degree of v correct hmm. here instead of degree we have put here status and you call it is a status connective index for every edge uv and similarly the second uh, status index is summation of sigma of u into sigma of v where uv belongs to u of g okay then similarly we can define for co indices so status co indices if uv is not in u of g Okay, then we call it the status uh, co indices. So consider this graph. So status of V1, okay, means uh, distance from V1 to all other points, some of the distance from V1 to all other points. So V1 to V2 is 1, V1 to V3 is 1, V1 to V4 is 2, V1 to V5 is 2. So adding all those, you will get the 5. That is the status of V1. Similarly, for example, if you take uh, 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 say v3 okay so distance from v3 to v1 is 1 v3 to v2 is 1 v3 to v5 is also 1 and v3 to v4 is also 1 so adding that it is a 4 so status of v3 is 4 so like that status of each point is calculated here and then uh, using these formulas okay status connective indices we can get the first status connective index of this graph is 74 and the second status connective index is 169 okay using these two formulas Okay. So then uh, for standard graphs, if G is a connected regular graph with a degree R, then uh, first status connective index is two times um, R into Weiner of G. Then for any connected graph G with order more than equal to four, the Weiner of G is strictly less than S1 of G is less than S2 G. For complete graph, it is uh, N into N minus one square. And second uh, status connected is half in, in, into N into N minus one cube. Same way for the complete bipartite graph. The first address index is PQ into 3P plus 3Q minus 4, and the second is PQ2 into P plus Q minus 1, P plus Q minus 2 plus PQ. The same for path we have calculated it is uh, 1 by 3 into n into n minus 1 into 2 n minus 1. And the second uh, status connected is given in this form. Okay, it is uh, uh, not possible to reduce further in the short form. Okay, so we kept like this only. Then for the cycle CN, the first status connected index is n cube by 2 if n is even and n into n square minus 1 by 2 if n is odd. And second uh, status connected index for cycle is given in the this expression in rest to 5 by 16 if n is even and n into n square minus 1 whole square divided by 16 if n is odd. Then some uh, relation between the status indices and the other uh, topology indices. So here if g is a connected graph, okay, it should be connected because we are dealing with the distances of the vertex, distance between the vertices. So graph should be connected. So g is a connected graph with n points and m lines. And suppose diameter of G is less than equal to 2. Okay. Uh, we have put here additional condition. Diameter is always uh, should be less than equal to 2. Then the first status connected index S1G is 4M into N minus 1 minus M1G, where M1 is the first Zagreb index. 
And second uh, status collector index is 4m into n minus 1 square into uh, 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 minus 2 into n minus 1 m1g plus m2g, where m2 is a second Zagreb index. So one can uh, express the status collector in terms of Zagreb index, provided the diameter is less than equal to 2. Uh, just I will outline here proof. Okay. Since diameter is less than equal to 2, so each vertex u, okay, the status is du plus 2 into n minus 1 minus du. That gives 2n minus 2 into d because uh, this point u is adjacent to du points, so degree of a point. Plus remaining point has distance 2 because diameter is less than equal to 2. Okay, so remaining points, how many remaining points? Yeah, uh, total points are n minus this point minus this this many points. So the remaining points are n minus 1 minus du. That is two times. So simply you will get 2n minus 2 minus du. Okay, so for diameter is that 2, the status of any point is in the form of this. So just replace uh, here in the uh, status formula. That is uh, sigma u plus sigma u. So for sigma u, it is 2n minus 2 minus du. And for sigma u, it is 2n minus 2 minus du. Okay, for every uh, adjacent pair. Then simplifying, okay, you'll get 4n, uh, 4n minus 4, okay, that can be, so it is, uh, or the, all lines, so it is 4m into n minus 1, minus, uh, you'll get this, du plus dv. And this du plus dv for every adjacent pair is nothing but the first diagram index. So easily one can get the, uh, this relation. Same way for the second connectivity index. So here summation of, uh, this is a formula, uh, status of u into status of u. So replace uh, status of u with this uh, quantity, 2n minus 2 minus du, into 2n minus 2 minus du. And then simplifying, we'll get here, 4m into n minus 1 square minus 2 into n minus 1 m1g plus m2. Okay. But if uh, diameter is more than 2, then uh, equality may not be hold. Okay. So that time, then we go for the bounds. So here, bonds for the status connective, it indices. So here G is a graph with the endpoint stem lines and uh, capital D is a diameter, okay. In the previous slide, we have taken small D, but here it is taken capital D, okay. Both are same. So 4M into N, so first status connective index of any graph lies between these two quantities. That is 4M into N minus 1 minus M1G and uh, 2m into d into n minus 1 minus d minus 1 m1g. Same way the st second status connected index lies between these two quantities for any graph. And the equality holds in both cases if and only if the diameter is 2 or 1. Okay. Equality holds if and only the diameter of a graph is the 2 or 1. Okay. And then same, uh, the similar expression can be expressed in the form of uh, maximum degree and minimum degree. Okay, so suppose small delta is a minimum degree and capital delta is a maximum degree of the point in a graph G. Then first status in the connective index lies between this 4m into n minus 1 minus 2m delta capital delta and 2m into d into n minus 1 minus 2m d minus 1 delta. Okay, and the second connectivity index lies between these two quantities. Okay, that is 4m into m minus 1 square minus 4m n minus 1 delta plus 4m delta square and this one. Okay, so these are expressed in the form of uh, minimum degree and the um, maximum degree. Okay, so if g is a regular graph, then again you can represent it because in the g is a regular, then the small delta as well as capital delta is same. So it is equal to r. And just replace this delta and small delta with r, you will get the uh, some more result for the regular graph in particular. So as I told, uh, just like uh, Zagreb coindices and other coindices, uh, we are defined as status coindex. Okay, so status coindex defined as will denote by S1 bar. Okay, that is uh, status of U plus status of V, where U and V are not in the edge set. That is U, U and V are not connected, or uh, means not joined by the edge. And the second uh, status coindex is um, product of the status of U and status of V for every non adjacent pair. Okay, for every non adjacent pair. If it is adjacent, then it is a status index. Non adjacent status co index. So here is the relation between the status indices and the status co indices. 
Okay, so S1 bar G is 2 into N minus 1 WG, that is binary index, minus S1 G. And S2 bar G is 2 times on WG square minus half into sum of status of U square minus S2 G. So these are the relation between the status indices and status quo indices for any graph, okay, for any connected graph. In addition, the, the parameter WG is also there. So if you know the S1G and WG, one can get the S1 bar. And if you know the S1 bar and WG, one, uh, S1 bar and WG, one can get the S1G from this expression. Uh, then uh, for diameter less than equal to, the S1 bar G is expressed in the form of co indices, uh, the Zagreb co indices. So S1 bar G is 2 into N minus 1, N into N minus 1, minus 2M, minus M1 bar G. And S2 bar G is given in this form, okay, in the form of Zagreb co indices. Okay. So the purpose of uh, introducing the such uh, indices to study the chemical properties of the molecule. So we are introducing our status indices and we are studied the uh, this one boiling point of the hydrocarbons. Okay. So correction between the boiling point of benzene hydrocarbons and the distance based indices of the corresponding. So these are the uh, selected uh, molecules. Okay, there are 21. Okay, they are the so here uh, molecular graph is how it is taken as if suppose uh, there is a carbon bond, uh, sorry, carbon atom, then it is taken as a vertex. Okay, and hydrogen atom signal and carbon carbon bond is there, then we put a line. Okay, so these are the graphical representation of the those molecules, major hydrocarbons. Already the other people are. Uh, work uh, taking this data for the other indices, okay, uh, maybe eccentricity index and then uh, general Zagreb index and all of that. Uh, so we also are uh, testing uh, our uh, indices, that is uh, status indices for these molecules. So here we are calculated, uh, these are the uh, hydrocarbons, this uh, listed here in this figure, 1, 2, 10, 10. So for each uh, molecular graph, we are calculated this. So boiling points are, uh, it is available in the uh, uh, literature, okay, we have taken that data, then we have calculated S1 for each uh, hydrocarbon, S2 also, this is a uh, eccentric index, okay, same way uh, as uh, Zagreb index, we write uh, summation of the degree of U plus degree of E, so like that eccentricity index is summation of the E of U plus E of E, where E of E is nothing but the eccentricity of a point, okay, eccentricity is the farthest distance from U to all other vertices. So, pair index, okay, which is some of the distances between all pairs of the points. Okay, so this data is calculated here. Continue here up to twenty-one hydrocarbons, and then uh, uh, we have put the correlation between these indices and the boiling point. Okay, so scatter plot is there. This is a plot between the boiling point and index S one. Is a boiling point and uh, index S2, boiling point and Xi1, that is first uh, eccentricity index, and boiling point of Xi2, that is a second uh, eccentricity index, and boiling point and binary index. Okay, so these are the scatter plots uh, uh, obtained by using uh, these uh, data. Okay. And uh, linear models are expressed in this form. Okay, so BP, BP is boiling point, is equal to 255.612 plus or minus this zero plus 0 0.06 plus or minus 0 0.004 S1. Yes, okay, so like that, S2, Xi1, Xi2, and W. Okay, uh, so these boiling points are expressed in the linear combination of S1, S2, Xi1, Xi2, W. And the corresponding uh, correlation coefficients are given here. So correlation coefficient from, one can see uh, the from here or one can calculate uh, between S1 and boiling point is 0 0.968, between uh, S2 and boiling point is 0 0.916, between Xi1 and boiling point 0 0.927, and between Xi2 and uh, boiling point is 0 0.826. Similarly, the correlation coefficient between Weiner index and the boiling point is 0 0.904. Okay. So, observing that, this data, see here, the correlation between S1 and boiling point is good one, okay, because the uh, correlation coefficient is 0 0.96 compared to all other values. Okay, same way S2 is also better than 
this two uh, zi2 and quinine index okay this two is also giving the good uh, correlation between uh, boiling point and s2 compared to the correlation between zi2 and quinine index okay so so s1 and s2 are having good uh, correlation with the uh, boiling point of the hydrocarbon so same way one can test for the other properties maybe vaporization or maybe melting point or for any other okay so like that by introducing the indices one can test whether they are good or not otherwise no use okay same otherwise uh, one has to find then at least uh, some relation some method properties of new indices with the original one or you should give something more than the existing one so looking to this uh, observation okay we can conclude here the model one that is this one this relation okay model one those the correlation of the boiling point of benzene with first status conduct is better that is point asset than the other uh, distance based indices same with the the model two is also good compared to the model four and five okay of course uh, this z1 uh, is also good compared to uh, s2 z2 and w okay this is also good but as one is giving more uh, uh, good correlation than the this uh, remaining four okay so next topic is a uh, top graphs okay so i covered a little bit about the topological indices based on the degrees as well as the um, based on the distances okay there are so other uh, indices are there based on the eigen values it's called standard index okay based on the eccentricities called the eccentricity index based on the some other uh, graph parameters okay so many other indices are there okay you know, one can think on this direction now come to the spectrographs okay this is also a big uh, uh, vast topic uh, developing uh, from the algebraic graph theory okay having the lot of uh, uh, relations with the other branches okay so just uh, or you the about uh, spectra and some little bit about the graph energy so uh, many of you know adjacency matrix okay it is a matrix of order n okay if suppose graph is a uh, uh, graph with uh, n points then corresponding matrix adjacency matrix is of order n n cross n in which the adjacent entry i j is 1 if the vertex vi is adjacent to vertex vj otherwise zero okay So if there is a line, we put one. Otherwise, zero. Diagonal elements also zero. Then the characteristic polynomial of this matrix, okay, that is a determinant of lambda i minus c of g, is denoted by phi of g lambda. We call it as a characteristic polynomial of a corresponding graph where i is identity matrix. Then eigen values of a g, okay, uh, we'll denote it by lambda one, lambda two, lambda n. Okay, they are called the eigen values of a graph g, and their collection is called the spectrum of g so if uh, lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda k are the distinct eigen values with the respective multiplicity m1 m2 mk then spectra can be written in this form okay lambda means it means so lambda 1 appears m1 times lambda 2 appears m2 times and so on lambda k appears mk times okay some of the these all m1 m2 mk is nothing but the number of points m1 plus m2 plus mk is equal to n is number of points in a graph so consider this graph whose uh, adjacency matrix is uh, shown here okay see uh, between v1 to v2 there is a line so we have put one here whereas v1 to v3 there is no line so it is zero okay so like that this zero one matrix is constructed that's the adjacency matrix and its uh, characteristic polynomial is lambda raised to 6 minus 9 lambda raised to 4 minus 4 lambda cube plus 12 lambda square and the uh, eigen values of this or roots of this equation okay uh, 3 1 0 minus 2 with uh, multiplicity 1 1 2 2 that is 3 appears one times 1 appears one times 0 appears two times and minus 2 appears two times okay so since uh, the order of a graph is n so there are n eigen values okay it is a uh, easy observation okay because the uh, matrix is n cross n and since uh, diagonal entries are zero okay so trace of a matrix is zero so trace of a matrix is nothing but the sum of the eigen values so sum of the eigen values are always zero in a 
this address as a matrix. Okay, so you see here, three plus one, that is four, plus zero, minus four. So you get total zero. So some of the original is always zero uh, because of test of a matrix. Uh, for a complete graph, okay, the in complete graph, every pair is at So when you take the characteristic polynomial, okay, or characteristic matrix, uh, that matrix, uh, characteristic matrix of a complete graph, it, it, it looks like this, and the characteristic polynomial is determinant of that. So you get all minus ones except diagonal. Diagonal it is lambda. Okay. So one can uh, subtract first row from the all other rows and then add the second to um, last column to the first one. You will get this matrix, uh, this determinant. Okay. And so it is a rectangular form. Okay. So its polynomial is, or it can be reduced as lambda minus n minus one. Okay into lambda plus one, lambda plus one, how many times? n minus one times. Okay, so this is a characteristic polynomial of complete graph. So uh, IG values are n minus one and the remaining are minus one. So this minus one appears n minus one times. So spectra of complete graph is this. n minus one and the remaining IG values are minus one. Okay. So easily just by elementary operation, um, we get the spectra of a complete graph. Okay, same way for the complete bipartite graph we can get. For that we use this uh, uh, determinant relation. Okay, if determinant of M is non-zero, that is M is non-singular matrix, then the determinant of this block matrix M and PQ is determinant of M into determinant of Q minus P M minus N. Okay, M should be non-singular. So for complete bipartite graph, okay, the characteristic polynomial is a determinant in this form. Lambda IP minus JP cross Q minus JQ cross P lambda IQ. Okay. IP, IQ are the identity matrices, whereas J is a matrix whose all entries are equal to 1. Okay. J is a matrix where all entries are equal to 1. So, adjacent matrix of complete bipolar graph can be expressed as a block matrix as 0, here J, here J, and 0. So, determinant gives this form. So using uh, this uh, relation, okay, M N P Q, mm. we can get here lambda is to P into determinant of lambda IQ minus J Q J lambda uh, this identity matrix by lambda and J. Okay, then multiplying and simplifying we'll get this. Okay, so this is nothing but uh, diagonally we'll get lambda square minus P and the all other entries because it is a matrix of our, whose all entries are one. You we'll get minus 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 P. So again using the Mm -hmm. Elementary transformation that is a uh, subtract first row from the remaining rows, okay, and then add the all uh, columns starting from two to last one to first column. We'll get this one. So again, it is a uh, reduced to the upper angular form, and uh, which gives lambda is to p minus q, lambda square minus p q, and this lambda square lambda square how many times? Q minus one times. Okay, so roots of this equation are plus or minus square root of pq and the remaining are zero okay so there are two roots non-zero which is square root of pq and minus square root of pq and remaining are zero so spectra of the complete bipartite graph is given in this form so these are some results if g is a label graph with adjacency semantics a okay label means you have to put the uh, double vertices, then the ij entry of a raised to k, okay, that is a into a into k times, okay, ij entry into a is the nothing but number of walks of length k from vi to vj, okay. So, walk is a sequence of points and lines starting from point and ending with point, and uh, two lines, uh, and each line is incident to its preceding and the succeeding point, that is a walk, okay. So if you take the diagonal entry, ith entry in the a square is nothing but the degree of a point. And if you take the diagonal entry, ith entry in the a cube, it is nothing but twice the number of triangles containing that point. So we can see here. Okay, this is a graph. Okay, this is a graph. Its uh, adjacent matrix is this. Okay, 
v1 to v2 there is a line so one v1 to v3 there is no line so zero and so on this is a this is a square a cube okay now observe as for this the eigent entry in a is to k is the number of box of length k okay so here if you take here so this is the number of box of length 2 from v1 to v3 okay number of box of length 2 2 uh, this is a k so 2 from v1 to v3 so v1 to v3 there is only one box same here v2 so number of box of length 2 from v2 to v2 number of box of length 2 from v2 there are three box see v2 to v1 and come back so v2 to v2. this is one box this is another box then v2 v3 v2 this is third one so there are three box of length 2 from v2 to v2 then here this gives number of box of length 3 from v1 to V two, okay, this number. So there are three walks of length three from V one to V two. Hmm. So V one to V two. So one, two, three. Then you can go one, two, three. This one, and then one, two, three. So there are three walks of length three. Okay. So in general, uh, in AK, the eigent entry is uh, number of walks of length k from V I to V J. So again, if these are the eigen values, then uh, as I told, some of the eigen values nothing but the trace of a matrix, so it is zero. Some of the eigen value uh, of a square, mm -hmm. some of the squares of the eigen values is two m because the uh, diagonal entries are degrees of the vertices. Okay, so degrees of the vertices. So some of the degrees of the vertices nothing but the two times number of lines, so you get two m. Okay, and the sum of the lambda i cubes. Okay, so this gives the number of Triangles, okay. Of means uh, number of box of length three, okay. From V I to V I, considering this, so you get sum of lambda i cube is six times t, where t is the number of triangles in a graph. So this is a uh, good result that if lambda is eigen value of any bipartite graph, then minus lambda is also its eigen value. Okay. So as uh, we have seen in the Complete bipartite graph. Okay, square root of p q is eigen value, so minus of that is also the its eigen value. So for any graph, uh, any bipartite graph, lambda is the eigen value, then the minus lambda is also its eigen value. Okay, then lambda uh, all eigen values lies between the negative of the maximum degree and the positive of the maximum degree. Okay, so if uh, g is a regular graph, then uh, eigen values lies between minus r and plus r. Same way, if g is a regular graph, then Its the maximum eigen value is R. Okay, so R is one of the eigen value which is the maximum. Okay, and if it is a connected, then only one such eigen value is there in the graph. Uh, so this is a characteristic polynomial. Suppose it is written in this form: lambda is to n plus a one lambda is to n minus one plus a two lambda is to n minus one. So, okay. So for each i, the number minus one is to our e i. Is the sum of those principal minus of a which have i rows and i columns. Okay, sum of the principal minus. Okay, of a which has i rows and i. Thus, uh, diagonal elements are zero, so a one is zero. The non-zero principal minor with two rows and two columns is of this form. Okay, in the any Jordan matrix. Okay, or at this point, so two with two rows, two columns with non-zero value is this, and its value is minus one. And this is corresponding to each line, corresponding to each line in a graph. So minus one square a two, okay, is nothing but minus one times number of lines. So a two will be minus one. So here a naught is always one, okay. A one is zero. A two is always negative of the number of lines. Same way a three can be given. So there are essentially three possibilities of non-trivial principal minus with three rows and three columns, okay. Either this one or this one or this one. Okay. Out of this, this two has the zero value, whereas this has value two. Okay, this has value two, and this is corresponding to the triangle. Okay, so if you corresponding to this matrix, if you draw a graph, you get a triangle. Okay, 
So this is calculated triangle. So you get minus one a cube. A cube is two times t. Okay, because two is the value of this matrix, this determinant. So two times. So this gives a three equal to negation of the two times number of triangles. Okay, so a four and a five is of them, but uh, remaining uh, coefficients are so far not expressed with the property of a graph. Okay, it is not known. Then this is a Sachs theorem. Uh, he has expressed the coefficients in the form of a subgraphs of a graph. Okay, so this is a characteristic polynomial with coefficients a not a one, a two, and so on. So coefficient a i can be expressed as summation of minus one to the power r of h into two to the power c of h, where h belongs to this h i. This h i is nothing but the set of subgraphs with i points. Okay, whose components are either lines or cycles. Okay, it is a set of graphs with i points whose components are either lines or cycles. Okay, r of h is the number of components and c of h is the number of cycles in that h. Okay, so I'll uh, explain with the example. See, consider this graph. We have to find the characteristic polynomial of this graph. Okay, so with uh, two points, the subgraphs are these. Okay, means all lines. Mm. Then with three points, these are the subgraphs of this. This this graph subgraphs are these. Okay, the graph should be contains either lines or cycles. So these are the subgraphs with three points. And here the subgraphs with four points. Either you can get these two lines, these two lines, or these cross lines, or you can get a cycle with four points, or you can get this cycle, or you can get this cycle. Okay, so these are the subgraphs with uh, four points. Which contains either lines or cycles. Okay, so a naught is one and a one is zero for a two. A two. So for this component, only one component and there is no cycle. So you can write minus one raised to one, two raised to zero. Similarly for this, only one component, no cycle. So minus one raised to one, two. Raised. Like that for all, you and if you get minus six, a three. So here, okay. So minus one raised to one because one component and one cycle is there. So two raised to one. Okay, minus one raised to number of components and two raised to number of cycles. So one component, one cycle. Similarly for this, this one component, one cycles. So we'll get minus eight corresponding to here. And for here now, for this graph, this subgraph, there are two components and no cycle. So minus one raised to two and two raised to zero, no cycle. Similarly for here. Whereas for this one. For this one, one component and one cycle. So minus one raised to one and two raised to one. Same way for here. So calculating that, you'll get minus three. So we got the coefficients. Okay, from the these basic figures. So characteristic problem can be written as lambda raised to four. A naught is one. So a one is zero. Then minus six lambda square, minus eight into lambda, and then minus. Three. So um, this uh, is a sack formula which express the. Uh, Coefficients of the characteristic polynomial. So, using these subgraphs or basic graphs, one can get the characteristic polynomial of the original graphs. Okay. Only thing you have to find the these subgraphs in such a way that which contains either lines or cycles. Okay. So then, uh, if V is an endpoint and W is adjacent, then the characteristic polynomial can be written as lambda into pi of g minus v lambda minus pi of g minus v minus lambda. And if it is a line that is h, then characteristic polynomial can be expressed as phi g minus c as phi of g minus u minus v lambda. Okay, means remaining the point and the line, one can get the characteristic polynomial of a graph. Okay, then I will just uh, um, give the brief in this one. If g is a graph with n points and m lines, then the maximum eigenvalue lambda one is always the square root of two m into n minus one by n. So this can be proved using the Cauchy square inequality. We know the, the Cauchy square inequality as sum of a i b i whole square is less than sum of a i square into sum of b i square. Okay, so take here a i is one and b i is lambda i. So we'll get here sum of lambda i square is less than equal to uh, n minus one to sum of b i square. Okay, now uh, this uh, it should be uh, uh, it is i uh, is not i starting from two p n. Okay, i starting from two p n. So it is you'll get n minus one here. So sum of lambda is zero. So you'll get here minus lambda one square, and sum of lambda square is two m. So you'll get here two m minus lambda. So simplifying this, we'll get the lambda one is always less than square root of 
पूजा में क्या नया सोन में या दिस अ कॉम्प्लीमेंट अभी ग्राफ सो एडजेसेंसी मैट्रिक्स अभी कॉम्प्लीमेंट ग्राफ इज जे माइस आई माइस ए ऑब्जेक्ट जे इज ऑलरेडी टोल इट इज अ मैट्रिक्स वो ऑल इंटीज़ आर इक्वल टू वन ओके दिस आर आइडेंटिटी Suppose eigen values of A G R lambda one lambda two lambda n, okay, and the eigen values of J R n and zero, okay. So from that relation, one can get the eigen values of G bar as n minus one minus R and uh, minus lambda and minus one. Okay, if you know the eigen values of graph G, then you can get the eigen values of G bar, provided G is a regular graph using this relation. Okay, cospectral graphs are graphs. Which having same spectra are called cospectral. So earlier it was believed that the different graphs has a different spectra, but that is not the case. For example, if you consider these two graphs, they are different, okay? But they are having the same characteristic polynomial, so their uh, eigen values are same, so they are cospectral. This is another pair, okay? Uh, this is a cycle with one point, and this is a star with uh, five points, whose uh, eigen values are two appears one time, zero appears three times, and minus two appears one time. So both Are different graphs, but having the same spectra. But one is connected. This is connected, whereas this is not connected. Consider this pair, where which is both are connected, okay, and both are having the same spectra. So such graphs are called cospectral graphs. So we still today don't know what is the condition to tell whether given graphs are cospectral or not. Okay, so not much work is done on uh, cospectral graphs. Okay. Now we'll go to the energy of a graph, the last part of uh, this uh, talk. Okay. So energy of a graph is defined as the sum of the absolute values of the eigen values of adjacent matrix. Okay. So already we have seen how to get the eigen values and what are the eigen values of some standard graphs and all that. Okay. If we add the absolute values of those eigen values, then we call it is a energy of that graph. So it has a relation with the Total pi electron energy of a molecule. Okay, uh, the studied by Hakel um, and uh, some other chemists, and this graph energy introduced first time by the Gutman. हेलो सर इज नॉट हियर सांबत कुमार सर स्टॉप प्रेजेंटिंग सांबत कुमार सर स्टॉप प्रेजेंटिंग Thank you. 